In this video, I'm going to show you five tips you should know about the incredibly powerful Frequency 2 EQ that you can find in Cubase. Let's get started. Tip number one is that every band in Frequency 2 can become dynamic. So in this case, I have a mix and I'm using Frequency 2 to enhance my kick drum in a dynamic way. Let's play it. So what I've done is I found the fundamental for the kick drum and I'm enhancing it in a dynamic way with frequency two. How do you do this? Let's go to our band two. And as you can see, we can turn dynamic mode on or off. So if I have it off, you will see that the mix is going to be a little bit bulky, a little bit undefined. where when I activate dynamic mode, you will see that this boost only happens when we have this kick drum hits and the mix is way more clear. We don't have these tails in the low end. Check out the difference without the dynamic and with. Now, if you want to show the dynamics parameters, you can just click on this icon right here and you will see that we have the threshold, we have the ratio, attack and release. And if you want to see a little bit more, you can go to single view right here. And this is where we can start tweaking all our dynamics processing. So I can say I want to actually start with a little bit of a boost and or I want to have a little bit of a cut when I begin with my processing. And then my dynamic EQ is going to be determined by these controls here. So we have the frequency, the Q, so how broad our Q is going to be, and the maximum gain. These are also extremely important. We have the attack and release. So in this case, I want to have a very fast attack because I want the dynamic EQ to react really fast to my kick drum hits. And we also have the threshold, which is extremely important because I want to make sure that I only trigger this dynamic EQ with the kick drum hits. So the trick here is to find the right threshold and then fine tune the ratio attack and release so that I get the sound that I need. In some cases, you need a softer response. You might not want such a fast attack or you might want a little bit of a longer release. So use your ears. Dynamic mode is extremely powerful and it can be independent for each band. Tip number two for frequency two is that it's a really powerful MS EQ. So you can turn each band into MS mode or stereo mode. So in this case, I'm going to use the same track. I have band number seven here. And as you can see right now, it's in stereo mode. But if I want, I can turn this into mid side. And this means I can treat my mid signal. So basically whatever is in the center and the side signal. So all the stereo information separately. This is an extremely powerful tool, especially when it comes to mastering, but also if you want to make things a little bit wider. So as you can see, I have my mid channel and my side channel. So let's say I want to enhance the things that reside on the side channel of this mix. Let's go and play a little bit with the side EQ here. So as you can see, when I'm boosting the side channel, I'm bringing out those vocal harmonies, I'm bringing out those synths, those reverbs. And if I use the mid channel, I'm bringing up the lead vocals. So this gives you a lot of control even when you're in a mastering situation because you might want to boost just the lead vocal that lives in the center. So in the mid channel, 
but you don't want to boost the background vocals or vice versa. So MS processing gives you a lot of power and Frequency 2 can do this very easily. And again, it's per band. So one band can be stereo and we can have another band being mid side. If I activate auto listen for the filters right here, now I can listen to exactly what's going on on my side channel if I move one of these bands here. Same with the mid signal. Tip number three, and this is a really powerful one for Frequency 2, is that each one of its bands can be turned into linear face mode independently, which means that it's not necessary for the whole EQ to be a linear phase EQ all of a sudden. Linear phase EQs have their advantages and disadvantages. So you might want to activate linear phase when retaining the phase of a channel is really important. For example, when you have multi-mic recordings, like what I'm going to show you in a second, or when you're using the EQ in parallel mode. In this case, it's a very good idea to use linear phase. But some other times you might not want to use linear phase because of pre-ringing and all these things. So the fact that Frequency 2 can have one band being linear phase and another one not being linear phase is extremely powerful. And as you can see, I can turn linear phase on and off like this very easily per band. Now I want to show you what a difference linear phase makes when you're using an EQ as a parallel send, maybe with compression or other processing. So let me play this multi-mic drum recording. And what I have here is a parallel channel where I have frequency 2 and I'm using the same instance of the plugin. So I'm going to start with non-linear and then I'm going to switch to linear phase and I want you to pay attention to the low end, to the low mids, to the body of the snare and all these things. Check it out. So as you can see, when we don't have linear phase activated, the sound is a little bit more weak. It's a little bit more hollow. The punch is not there. It makes a huge difference. But the great thing with Frequency 2 is that you have total control over which band is going to be linear phase and which band is not going to be linear phase. The next really powerful Frequency 2 tip that I want to give you is the fact that it supports sidechain. So you can use this in conjunction with the dynamic mode that I showed you earlier, but instead of having level triggering the EQ, you can have an external source triggering the EQ. In order to show you this, let me give you a very quick example. Here I have three channels. I have a road channel, I have a sub, and I also have a vocal and I'm going to play it, have a listen and see how muddy and confused it sounds like because this Rhodes is in the way of both my sub and my vocal. So what's the solution? Multiple sidechain inputs. Now, the extra trick that you can do with Frequency 2 is that it doesn't only allow different sources to trigger the dynamic EQ, but it also allows for multiple sidechain inputs. And how you do this? Extremely easy. We go here, as you can see, I can open my setup sidechain routing. And if you see this, we have multiple sidechain inputs. So the first input in my case is my sub. As you can see here, I can add many different sources, but in this case, I'm using the first input for my sub and the second sidechain input right here is my vocal. This means that I can have my vocal triggering one band and my sub bass triggering a completely different band. And this is exactly what I've done here. On band number four, I am triggering with sidechain two, which is my vocal. And when my vocal plays, I'm going to have reduction in the mid channel for this Rhodes. But if I go to band number one, you will see that I have a completely different sidechain. I have sidechain one, which is 
my sub right here. And this means that when my sub lays, the low end of this road part is going to be reduced. So let's have a listen with and without the EQ. gives you the illusion that the sub bass is clearer and the vocal is louder. This is the power of dynamic EQing when you have multiple sidechain sources and frequency can do this super easily. And the last tip I want to give you is that you can target frequencies depending on the note pitch. So this is going to be extremely useful if you're trying to boost a frequency of, let's say, a kick drum that has a little bit of a pitch information or a sub bass, an 808 that has a very specific fundamental, which is based on actual pitch. So you have a specific note playing there. So in order to do this, you just select one of the bands and then you can just drag right here on the keyboard view. And this way you can select the frequency of the note you want to boost or cut. So in this case, let's say I know that my song's key is in E minor, I can target possibly a low E note. Very useful function and extremely easy to target the right frequency when you know the note that you're going to target. So there you go, these are five tips you should know for frequency two. I hope you enjoyed this video, happy mixing, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.